the hill of Halfon with a little palace on it. You certainly would notice that when we were in the garden. It's called the One Month Palace because it was built in one month's time. And this 400 years ago, here it is. One month time, what? Huh? See? Oh. Up there. And I'm pointing out this uh, little palace because when we are up at the convent, uh, from there you will see the hill with the palace again and recognize it. So I think we let Judy Andrews continue her singing if uh, it is okay with you. And in the meantime, I continue telling you stories about the Trapp family. Um, well, as I said, we will come back to the to that yellow building, which was shown as home of the Trapp family. Um, the real house of the Trapp family was never shown in the film, uh, probably because uh, in the meantime, the Trapps had sold it to the Catholic Church, and uh, it was used as a seminary for future priests called St. Joseph. It is at another end of the city of Salzburg. Uh, even if we would try to pass by, we wouldn't see very much because they have high walls around and high trees and it's in a very narrow uh, street. So um, I couldn't, even if I wanted to, I couldn't show it to you. But it was a nice little palace. And as I said, uh, the, there was still all the money of uh, Agatha, the first wife of the Baron, on the in the 30s, the Baron lost all the money. Uh, not because of the financial or economical situation, but because he brought it from England, where it was all safe, and would have been safe <laughs> all the time. A, a real fortune. I mean, for hundreds of years, they could have lived uh, off it. But uh, he brought it to Salzburg and to a private bank, where he knew the director personally. And this uh, lady had a lover who went away with all the money. Oh, and goodness. she was bankrupt, she had to go to, to, to a prison, she committed suicide, but it didn't change anything, the money was gone. And uh, so there was uh, a real difficulty then. And at the end, uh, the children and the family lived in the attic where the employees used to live. And uh, they tried to sell, uh, they tried to rent the rooms. Now look here to the right because we are back to this yellow wall. And you see the palace again. But you remember, uh, it was shown again when the family tried to escape. Remember after the song contest, uh, they uh, had decided that they uh, wanted to escape. They pushed out the car of the courtyard and when they came around the corner uh, to the alley, uh, there was that black car of that unpleasant uh, Mr. Teller and they put the lights on them and wanted to know where they planned to go and then they were uh, while well, trying to find an excuse and an explanation said they would go to the song contest. So that was uh, filmed over there as well. Now, um, I was going to tell you that suddenly the Trapp family was there in the meantime with uh, nine children and no money because he was a mariner and Austria had lost all the money, uh, all the <laughs> Uh, had lost all, all the um, well shore, all the uh, sea uh, parts uh, with the First World War, and uh, so there was no demand and no need for a mariner, and uh, he hadn't learned anything else. So that was a really a difficult situation. But Maria, as I tried to explain, she always had good ideas, and so she tried to do what other noble families uh, have done after the First World War, who had big houses and no money left. Uh, she tried to rent the rooms. And um, they rented it to young students and professors of the university. And she's, Maria said it was quite interesting for the children. They, there was a lot to learn because there were very interesting discussions for, at the dinner table with these people. And during summertime, in Salzburg, we have the Salzburg Festival, July and August, uh, since 1920, so also in the time of the traps. Only in these days, there were no good hotels. And there were a lot of rich people coming to Salzburg uh, to, for the festivals. 
and uh, so they tried to find rooms and uh, the top villa was one of these let's say private uh, hotels uh, it happened that a famous singer a famous soprano um, Lotte Lehmann you probably have never heard her name but she was really internationally known uh, she had heard about the trap villa that they she could rent a room there came out there and heard the children singing and she was so enthusiastic about it she said they had gold in their in, in, in their throats and it was like you would hear angels singing so she had the connections to the Salzburg Festival and she made the arrangements that they could enter a song contest which happened a few days afterwards and so there was the song contest and the trap family won so this is uh, right like in, in sound of music and this concert was broadcasted in radio and heard all over Austria and it was heard by the last Chancellor of Austria, uh, Schuschnigg, who usually for his New Year's reception had used uh, musicians of the Philharmonic, Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. He heard the children singing or the family singing and thought he would invite them. So for that New Year's reception where all the ambassadors of other countries were invited, uh, they sang and were heard by these uh, people and they invited them right away to sing in their country. So from then on, and that was in 1935, the Trapp Family's Choir was a professional choir and very demanded and they sang all over Europe. They were in England singing for Queen Mary, they were uh, in Rome singing for the Pope and so on. And they also had an invitation to sing in America uh, for a longer time. And thus the political situation had become uh, with Hitler in 1938 uh, coming into Austria it had become a little difficult. They decided to follow that invitation and go back to America and sing there. Now I have to interrupt because we get off at a place where we are not allowed to 